remains in Gaza. He is one of the, uh, as I said, confirmed 135 hostages still in the hands of Hamas. Now, joining us now is his brother, Yaniv Yaakov, um, who joins us from the town of Gan Yavne, Israel. Uh, Yaniv, this must be a, a, a trying time for the whole family. Uh, I've uh, spoken with the mother of the two boys, Renana, before the, the boys were released, and of course, I can imagine the joy uh, for their their release and for Mia. But maybe in, there is a danger in the, uh, and I'm wondering if you think that in the the, the or letdown that we in the the relief that as some many of the hostages, the women and the children were returned. We're forgetting. We're not paying enough attention for those that remain, and men like Yaniv, uh, like uh, Yair, who are still there in, in Gaza. Yeah, we are all in mixed emotions. We are happy that the kids return, that Mayrav return. We were, we were excited. I think in the same excitement, we are worried. Also, Mayrav is worried, and the kids are worried. Because the yeah, is still there, so our heart is not complete. Our family is not complete. We know for a fact that the IR was uh, injured during the attack, and uh, <clears throat> while they took him, they used brutal force against him, and that he was uh, injured even more than just a gunshot in his leg, like Arab told us. And uh, we are totally worried because no one has any information about the IR. No sign of life from him, from none of the ones who returned. But we also know that uh, no sign of life for others too. So the IR is not the only one who we didn't get anything or any new information about him. So that's the hope that he's still okay, that his uh, injuries, uh, injuries were taken care of. Uh, we. We are struggling, we are continuing to fight and we ask the world for help, for humanitarian release of all the hostages, like the world was asking for humanitarian aid for Gaza. We actually ask for humanitarian release of the hostages, especially the civilians who are not supposed to be part of this war, neither in the Israeli side or Gaza side, of course. Um, the release of the hostages and the ones who were injured are the main focus for us because we don't know what what is the situation right now. And since we got the information that Mayor Ralph said that he was injured by a gunshot and then was brutally harmed by the terrorists, we are very worried. Right, and uh, you mentioned no sign of life, of course. Uh, there has been uh, calls uh, from the hostage families from Israel, too, especially to the International Red Cross uh, to make a greater effort, uh, uh, to, to at the very least attain access or information. Uh, there was a report of the uh, the, uh, the Red Cross uh, contacting families of some of the remaining hostages seeking medical records, even maybe uh, DNA material. Has there been any contact? Uh, as far as you know, to your family, to you personally, from the Red Cross, and if not, what is your, what is your message to them? So we plead, we beg for any sign of life from the hostages. We need that so we can continue uh, our fight to bring them back. Without that, every day is devastating. Every day, my mom, she's 77 years old, and uh, she is breaking. She is broken from the 7th of October, and every day that passes is even worse. Uh, we need something from the Red Cross. We uh, are trying in all our efforts to get some information about the ones who were still there. 
Right. Now, we saw uh, the other day the march of the uh, 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 hostage families up to Jerusalem, to the Knesset, bringing its message there to the government. We see today, we're having reports just now, a short time ago, President Biden did meet with some hostage families in the White House. So let's now talk about the two governments, uh, what you specifically want to see. And it's a difficult issue for Israel, how to proceed on the hostages, whether to proceed with some of the deals being suggested. So your message both to Jerusalem and I would think to Washington also this evening. Yeah, so again, all, all we need as families, and we, we are not taking part of any side, right? Uh, all we need is our loved ones back together with us. We need them to, to be here, to continue and live in peace like we used to. Right. Just a reminder that Gair and all of the surrounding um, uh, towns or kibbutzes around Gaza are all people who believed in peace. That's why they lived there. They they are all people who are people of other people. They don't look at whether you're a, a Jew or a Muslim or a Christian. It doesn't matter for them. They want to live and live in peace. That's why they chose to live so close to the border. But I believe that if the world understands that these people, these civilians, these honest people were taken, they're not supposed to be there, especially because they are so believable of, of peace, right? They are the ones who believe in peace. All right. Well, uh, certainly, Yaniv, we, we join in the family's happiness uh, for the return of the boys, Or and Yagil, uh, and also of uh, Yair's partner, Merav Tal, and we're certainly grateful for that. Uh, but of course, our, our, our deepest wish is to see uh, Yair. Uh, return safe and home, safely home, with all of the hostages still being held uh, in uh, Gaza. Uh, Yaniv Yaakov, thank you so much for joining us on I-24 News. Thank you so much for having me.